How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Ah, the late, great Dale Carnegie. Just kidding, this guy's been dead for like over half a century, but his work is still very relevant. Just kidding, I mean, some of it's still pretty outdated, especially the psychological studies, but most of it isn't. Or is it? In my experience, it's best to just listen for yourself, try these things on for size, and see how the shoe fits. This book is still one of my favorites of all time, but there are certain things about it that I will admit I'm willing to change at the drop of a hat, given the chance. There are two qualms I want to get out of the way first. This is the second audiobook I ever listened to about a year after entering the American workforce. I listened to it on repeat during my first job hunt in sales about 15 times over, and it's so rich and elegant, yet friendly and, and rather noble. The book and the narration, by the way, what's his name, Eric McMillian or something? That dude is on fire. The storytelling is vivid, and this author really understands how to smoothly guide someone's view a little further beyond what it already is. You get descriptions of technology, occupation, money, transportation. In the book that are now, they're just now so last century, industrially speaking, that like swallowing audiobooks and ordering Uber Eats and replying to customers, setting appointments and making money on my own phone. Like, the only thing that really lives beyond its own years with How to Win Friends is the principles it teaches. And I feel bad saying that because, let's face it, my favorite book ever, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, came out around the same time, and it's not much better with this. I hope not to address this in the other review. The author couldn't have controlled this, but someone's gotta say it at some point. My other qualm, since getting into sales, I've been giving maybe maybe like a like a concrete handful of sales scripts. And I've come across maybe over a hundred different like objection rebuttals. And some of those takes this book's ideas and principles and abuses. I swear, it's an epidemic. It is a crisis. I see so much of those in this book and they are used very poorly. I don't know who wrote them. I know that they work, I do. You can't stay in business if these things do not work, but they need some serious customization. And sales trainers who do not stress that, like, why? <laughs> the way that people abuse information in this book popularized in sales in the last century, it is kind of poisonous in my opinion. And it may be one of the biggest commonly overlooked reasons why salespeople, as a salespeople, Maybe I have more trust as a book reviewer with my audience than uh, as a salesperson with customers. <laughs> Why we don't have the trust of the general public that other professionals do, like bakers and auto techs. So I'm gonna highlight some of those principles in this review, but that's it really. I mean, most people watching this book are probably not salespeople. Maybe they are, who knows? And like I said, this is an all-time favorite of mine. So I ask to please do not let this data discourage you. If you can appreciate and beneficially apply the contents of this book that you will find helpful, I I swear you will be astonished at the difference it makes in your life. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal because I don't want to do it alone, then make sure to smash that like button. The author intended to write a handbook for human relations and here it is. For quite some time he read newspaper columns, magazine articles, records of family courts, old philosopher and new psychologist writings, or new at the time. He hired someone for I think uh, a year and a half to search for everything that he had missed. They read every single great biography from Caesar to Edison. I think it was Roosevelt who they actually read a hundred different biographies of him alone. Or maybe it was Lincoln. Or both. <laughs> it was just very thorough. And I say this like I was there for some reason. <laughs> the book starts with fundamental ways of handling people, six ways to make people like you, how to wing people to your way of thinking, and be a leader. The chapter, if you want to get honey, don't kick over the beehive, it'll teach you that criticisms are like honing pigeons. They always return home. The last person you want to blame for your wrongdoings is yourself. More of a don't than a do, if you ask me. Don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Wow, I suddenly feel like I did a lot of this in this review so far. To be fair, neither qualm I listed was under Carnegie's control. Seriously. This is one part that stood out in the next chapter. Here is his secret set down in his own words. Words that ought to be cast in every maternal bronze and hung in every home and school. Every shop and office in the land. Words that children ought to memorize instead of wasting their time memorizing the conjugation of Latin verbs and the annual amount of rainfall in Brazil. Words that will all but transform your life and mine if we will only live by them. I would consider my ability to arouse enthusiasm among my people the greatest asset that I possess and the way 
way to develop this within a person is by appreciation and encouragement. There is nothing else that so kills the ambition of a person as criticism from superiors. This chapter stresses the differences between appreciation and flattery. One is sincere, the other is insincere. One comes from the heart, the other comes from the teeth. <laughs> and when making points like this one, he will first wholeheartedly acknowledge, even with historical examples, that opposing viewpoints to a degree are very correct. Like, oh, that's just dumb. I've treated, I tried appreciating someone as a, and as a result, they don't work any harder. It's dumb, I will never do it. The more you digest this book, the more you might realize that one, it's just common sense. Like everyone should know this, Sam, come on. Or at least you would think so. Or two, it's about being a specifically nice person. I don't see everyone doing it. <laughs> I do see some people doing it, but those people are my favorite people and I wonder why. One of the most impressive examples he uses in influencing people is the dog. Just another example, a dog is always excited to see people. I think dogs are the only animals who don't have to work for a living. And that's probably why, at least primarily. The thing that aligns this book with common sense is that common sense is not common anymore. It really isn't. When someone says, you should know this, it's common sense. Of course I should, everyone who's amazing at this job knows how to do it. But are you really that surprised like if I don't know it? What separates this information from common sense in the book is that I'm not sure if it was ever common. <laughs> Like, really? The sweetest people you will ever meet probably unknowingly apply information from this book all the time. Like, the next chapter is about smiling. Like, duh. Why wouldn't you smile? Like, but people don't do that everywhere they go out in public. But I swear, a good enough smile on you or anyone will change your day. It's very rare that I actually have a bad day because I'm so quick to call or answer phones with a smile on my face. Out of habit. I read a comment recently saying that I, I seem to put a lot of stock in popularity and come to think of it, I do. Why wouldn't I? I try to put a lot of stock in why people are popular and how they become popular, but YouTubers with millions of subscribers, they rarely have ugly smiles. I know sometimes it's they get like surgery or whatever, but admittedly, I say this every time I visit my hygienist. <laughs> every time I see a new like customer lead come in with a, with a name I can't pronounce, I immediately, before I call or anything, I immediately look up their name on Google and how to pronounce it. Nine times out of 10, I see a short video because of course everything's on YouTube. And it's from a site called pronouncenames.com. I love them, they're amazing, pronouncenames.com. And in the beginning of the video, there's a quote that says, the sweetest sound in the world is the person's own name. And I think that this chapter gave birth to that channel. Here's one part that stood out and actually prompted me to make doing this a habit because I, I never know when this person might be me. I made a special effort to say his name several times to myself before I made a call. When I greeted him by his full name, good afternoon, Mr. Nicodemus Papadoulos, he was shocked. For what seemed like several minutes, there was no reply from him at all. But he finally said with tears rolling down his cheeks, how can you tell that tears are rolling down someone's cheeks when they're off? I, I don't know. Mr. Levy, in all the 15 years I've been in this country, no one has ever made the effort to call me by my right name. Have you ever had a 45 minute conversation with someone where they did maybe infinitely more of the talking than you? And at the end of the conversation, they were like, this was a great conversation. Hopefully by the way I phrased that, it's obvious why. If, if any success I've had with these videos, it might be, you could attribute it to the fact that I'll listen to as long as like a 29 hour long audiobook before talking about it for 10 to 20 minutes. The next principle, how to interest people, is kind of the same. It kind of bounces off the other. A lot of these bounce off of each other and you, and you find yourself overlapping them and like, using the, it's cool, it's really fun. Being a great conversationalist is so about listening. There's a great shortage of listeners in the world. Interesting others is about being interested in others. When I heard the stories in this part of the book, I was like, dude, this is just like getting depressing. I mean, like, <laughs> we humans are so selfish. It's kind of depressing, but sugar. Hello, you little bag of bones. She's very sweet. She's 15 years old. Sugar. But it was really only this part, and I'm willing to bet a lot of like self-proclaimed fact checkers might get out of the chapter you can't win an argument, and the next chapter as well. Something I also realize is that the more I learn about people and apply the information from other books, the more illuminating I find this one when I revisit it. For example, just saying that you understand, or that you're wrong, just saying that alone, could you imagine that just working on yourself as well as, come to think of it, I don't entirely agree, my, not everything I I say is as true 
one day as the next. Maybe the next time you're in my neighborhood, you can stop by. I'd love to hear more of your side of the story. That is just disarming. Rebuttals and responses, they're not as effective as if they don't truly acknowledge that you get the other person's point of view. When someone at work tells me, you're not giving me enough money for my trade-in vehicle? I like to say, I knew that before you did. I totally agree. That number is way too low, but I don't remember the last time someone said it was too high. So the best thing we can do on your trade would be to stop by with it so we can take a look at all the details and get you the most money possible for it. It took me some trial and error to come up with this, and it may change over time, but so far it's been pretty helpful. When you don't actually sound like you mean these things as well, when they don't sound genuine, you may be surprised how few people fall for it. So if it takes some time and practice to build that sincerity, which by the way, there is nothing wrong with having to do that, I swear it is worth it. And I'm still working on myself. The secret of Socrates is the most abused principle in this book by salespeople and certainly the rulers of America, also known as lawyers. The Socratic method is where you ask questions that prompt a yes response and use them to find and patch up holes in a person's logic. They stress controlling the conversation with questions. The power is not on the side of the person asking the questions. I mean it is, but not as much as the person getting the answers. I can't help but think, guys, that the more I learn and see that, the more the word yes alone is just beginning to lose its power. To me, if I haven't said it already, the most extraordinary thing about this book is the stories Carnegie uses as examples of each principle and how he tells them. And the range of different examples is, is just insane. He'll use small, medium, and large business dealings, family matters with members of all ages, interactions with strangers around the country, students and teachers, fellow employees, people and animals. I mean, there's nothing he doesn't touch here. That's what she said. <laughs> From appealing to the nobler motive, to sympathizing with other people's ideas and desires, to throwing down a challenge and listening. Like, these are just principles of great leadership and influence. The most powerful people today know how to do this like they know how to breathe. Certain concepts, like I said, they kind of overlap into each other. Like the one about the foreman trying to consistently get his workers to wear their hard hats. And the one where, who was it, Roosevelt or something? He gave cigars to these guys at a factory with a no smoking sign above their heads, telling them that he would appreciate if he smoked those outside. Side. Just classic example after another of conflict resolution. And again, he tells the stories that's not in, a, in like a corny way, like Bobby gave Susan three apples. He had four, but Bobby hadn't eaten all day. So what did he do? No, that's not what this is. Actually, it, it kind of is, but the stories are more detailed and granular than that. Naturally, I didn't want David to smoke, but his mother and I had smoked cigarettes. We were giving him a bad example all the time. I explained to David how I started smoking at about his age and how the nicotine had gotten the best of me. And now it was Im nearly impossible for me to stop. I reminded him how irritating my cough was and how he had been after me to give up cigarettes years before. I didn't expect him to stop or make threats or warn him about their dangers. He thought about it for a while and decided he wouldn't smoke until he had graduated from high school. As the years went by, David never did start smoking and has no intention of ever doing so. As a result, I made the decision to stop smoking cigarettes myself, and with the support of my family, I've succeeded. I'm sure much of this review has hinged upon examples, the quality, frequency, and organization of them facing the target of teaching what a book does. However, I have just never been so stunned by an author's ability to do that as I have with uh, How to Win Friends. As sincerely and thoroughly, yet, e as e yet easily, and with as much finesse as possible, you'll learn from this book the benefits of making the effort to understand others and make them feel important. In case I didn't say it already, there is a severe shortage of people who truly know how to do this today. And until the day, this is all like mainstream knowledge that will maybe clearly stay the case. I would also argue that there is a severe shortage of books with this one's quality coming out today. This one, Thank You Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. I mean, these are like, you know, the three great classes classics of self-help. And there are some groundbreakers that seriously came out in like the last maybe two decades, but even with, to me, what seemed like the first listener to the stories of a boringly outdated nature and setting, the principles behind them are just about uh, timeless and of growing necessity. I wonder what the world would be like if these concepts were taught as exhaustively in schools as the topics of science, history, math, and English currently are, and what people did 
most extraordinarily with their information, would be covered on the mainstream news sources as much as disaster and political division. I could be wrong, but when I strongly believe that when self-growth is, is normal, they'll be teaching books in schools like this one. And at that time, books like this will have been surpassed by others that were clearly written more recently, just so that the coming generations can understand them with a little bit more ease. I heard there's a new like version of this or something called How to Win Friends and Influence People in the Digital Age. I heard it sucked, actually. <laughs> I'll have to review it, but we'll see. <laughs> Quotes. Don't complain about the snow on your neighbor's roof when your own doorstep is unclean. If you tell me how you get your feeling of importance, I'll tell you what you are. Once I did bad, and that I heard ever. Twice I did good, but that I heard never. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Talk to people about themselves and they will listen for hours. You can measure the size of a person by what makes him or her angry. In in my walks, every man I meet is in some way my superior, and in that I learn of him. In every work of genius, we recognize our own rejected thoughts. They come back to us with a certain alienated majesty. Direction 1. This is the rare book on this channel that I will recommend for everyone. If you're not good with people, if you really don't understand why you're disliked, as much as you are, if you're unhappy with the way others treat you, if you feel unimportant in the eyes of others, frequently misunderstood, and especially if you'd say that introversion has, less, has left you socially just a lot more incapacitated than you'd like to be. Believe me, I've been there. I've allowed it to, I allowed it to cripple my childhood. And before opening up and getting comfortable in conversation, I can still be rather shy and awkward in real life compared to these videos. It's, it's still hard to pinpoint why. Direction two, again, in terms of like quality, if you like this book and you're looking for more classics, I wouldn't look any further than to start with Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. Regarding social skills, and, and influencing people and networking. I know it doesn't touch this one in terms of like golden classic quality, but I loved Captivate by Vanessa Van Edwards. I was very impressed with it. You might also like The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. How to Win Friends and Influence People by the legendary Dale Carnegie. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please, please, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. If you guys buy anything through the links in the description, then I get commission, which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos. But hey, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if y'all want to read, because I don't get how people watch this far into my videos. This is like a 20 minute video or something. And they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.